Uh, I would first give the floor uh, to Mr. Minister, uh, who can enlighten you with uh, the marking of the 20th anniversary so far. There was a grand ceremony in Vienna, but we also wanted to bring some of that atmosphere to New York. So, Mr. Minister. Well, thank you very much, dear Assistant Secretary General. Um, my name is Gerhard Duyak. I am, as you've heard, head of the Department of Human Rights, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Vienna. And uh, I'm very pleased and would like to thank you for having you know, organized this possibility. Um, next week is for, for everyone, I think, a very busy week and a very important week. But I think it is a particular moment uh, for us to, you know, to, you know, to commemorate 20 years of uh, uh, Vienna Human Rights World Conference. Um, why I do mention that is because I think uh, in the preparation of the event you have mentioned earlier, there were so many discussions and possibilities which, were, which, which we had to tackle with. I mean, there were, there were quite a, a number of you know, thoughts and thinkings which were going on. What are we doing for the 20th anniversary of Vienna? What was Vienna about in 1993? Um, that was for us the first question which we needed to approach. Um, Vienna was a shift of paradigm in our impression. Vienna has indeed made possible what many years before we thought we need to fight for. Um, 1993, let us just briefly recall the historical situation. There was a change, uh, the, the, the opening, the end of you know, east-west confrontation, the opening of the borders from Austria to, to its neighbors, which was felt very Pre at this, this time was felt very presently that times are moving, that the situation is changing, and human rights approach is going to be different. Um, and therefore, Vienna came at a very important political moment that um, um, to, to reflect uh, the situation with regard to not only the political situation, but also to the new understanding which we have managed uh, with regard to the human rights. Our minister in Vienna has, pr has put it very simply. An atmosphere of hope had spread across the world. Nonviolent democracy movements have succeeded to bring an end to totalitarianism in all Eastern Europe. With this, they also put an end to the global division into Eastern and Western blocs, which we had experienced so acutely here in Vienna, so close to the Iron Curtain. The time was ripe for the setting of new standards for the worldwide promotion and protection of human rights. 20 years later, I think the moment came for us to think not to, to refresh our commitment, but to take a fresh look on the commitments which we had taken 20 years ago. And therefore, I think the idea came up together with OHCHR to call for an expert conference in Vienna in June of this year um, who, who tries to you know, bring up focus on the legacy of 20 years of Vienna, what brought Vienna to us, but also on the you know, issues which we need to approach more thoroughly. We have identified together with OHCHR uh, three numbers of issues, um, um, and I would just briefly like to recall them. The first one, sorry, the first one was realizing the human rights of women universally, tackling the implementation gap. In fact, that was the second working group. The first working group was strengthening the rule of law, the right to an effective remedy for victims of human rights violations. And the third chapter, I would say, was mainstreaming human rights, a human right-based approach to the post-2015 development agenda. In this, I mean, you see yourself, I mean, many of the questions which we are approaching is, uh, which we were approaching during this Vienna conference were very much linked to the international agenda, agenda with regard to human rights in general, but also to the large, much larger issue of post-2015 development agenda. The issue was tackled particularly, I think, from the women perspective and also from the, from the MDG, post-MDG situation, how to you know, introduce the human rights approach, a human rights-based approach into our development cooperation. Um, many, um, the discussions were very, very positive. I mean, we had about 130 experts who came from every party, from every, where, um, from every region of the world. Um, and furthermore, we have invited a number of um, participants from all countries. Um, we had open meetings 
uh, more devoted to the legacy side or to, to, to political um, um, uh, discussions. We had the presence of High Commissioner Ms. Navi Pillai. She made the opening together with our uh, Vice Chancellor and Foreign Minister, Mr. Spindleger. Um, we had also the, the pleasure to see um, the presence of uh, uh, Under Secretary General, uh, uh, Deputy, uh, Under Secretary General Eliasson. Uh, he came uh, for the closure, closing session. We had focused particularly on the on the situation of uh, victims of human rights vi uh, um, violences. They f we felt 20 years after Vienna, um, 20 years ago, that was the opportunity to hear and listen to the civil society. It was the first time in our understanding where civil society has received an important role. Vienna counted more than 1,000 civil society organizations in, in the margin, in a civil society forum in the margin of the conference. So listening to the civil society organization, to human rights defenders, to victim of violation of human rights, seems to, be, to us to be, to, to, to be central to the, to the concerns which the governments need to approach right now. Therefore, also at the title of the, the first uh, uh, um, um, chapter, Remedies. Um, and uh, in that respect, we had also invited a certain number of you know, persons from different countries of uh, the world, bringing us their testimony, showing us where the concerns are, and helping us to introduce a number of you know, uh, concrete recommendations. Um, that I will come to the end uh, of my brief resume of the, what was Vienna about, is the recommendation. We had presented a chairman's summary containing all the, you know, the recommendations coming from this conference. Our feeling is that the next steps which we should take is to disseminate <laughs> the information, make this recommendation known to the public, um, and you know, give a basis for future discussion. I mean, allow that these recommendations are introduced in the, in the multilateral and uh, bilateral and multilateral negotiation processes with regard to the uh, human rights development agenda. And I think this is a bit the outcome of which we'd like to see also from next week's meeting to help have the opportunity to see where are we going, what is you know our, what are our commitments from Vienna 20 years ago, and what are the next steps we should take. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, Mr. Minister. I thank your government very much uh, for uh, the organizing of commemoration uh, in Vienna but also for organizing together with us this side event. And we are particularly happy that uh, Mr. President will be able uh, to be keynote speaker at that event together with uh, High uh, Commissioner Navi Pillai. It is envisaged to be an exciting event as uh, Vienna uh, and uh, World Conference of Human Rights uh, does deserve. We picked a, a format where after two keynote speeches by President of Austria and High Commissioner, we would be having an interactive dialogue that I would be moderating together with two former High Commissioners. So, with uh, Madame Boer and uh, and uh, with uh, 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 yeah Mary Robinson, of course, uh, uh, and it's envisaged to be not just statements, but a number of tough issues opened and discussed. And after that, we will open the floor uh, for uh, participants and. Uh, it seems that we attra attracted a lot of attention. Uh, we so far have a couple of presidents that are interested to participate from the floor in the discussion, and we have a long list uh, of ministers. So far, we have president of Costa Rica and Croatia, uh, president of parliament of Finland, and uh, uh, a list of ministers is pretty long, from Tunisia, Latvia, El Salvador, Liechtenstein, Korea, United Kingdom. Uh, we will be having, of course, uh, uh, high-level representatives of civil society. Uh, Mr. Shetty of Amnesty International already announced his participation. Human Rights Watch will be there, and, of course, uh, a number of others. Now, uh, why am I saying that I believe that it's going to be an exciting event? 
because it's not going to be uh, a solemn commemoration and speeches. We think that this is a great opportunity to try to identify 20 years after Vienna what have we achieved and where we failed. As Mr. Minister described, Vienna was held in a specific atmosphere, atmosphere of optimism. We were feeling after the fall of the Iron Wall that only sky is the limit. I was myself in Vienna. I even chaired a part of the conference. And I remember that energy of Vienna, which was then translated to some other world conferences that follows. It was Cairo conference, uh, it was uh, Beijing conference, it was Copenhagen, it was Istanbul and uh, Habitat. So uh, there was an atmosphere, there was a hope. Uh, meanwhile, a lot has undoubtedly been achieved. Uh, there is a stronger, more robust human rights organizational framework. Uh, Office of High Commissioner has been established. We have Human Rights Council. We have universal periodic review, and now each and every country is submitted to some sort of human rights reporting. Considerably strengthened uh, treaty body system, special procedures, being able to be human rights firefighters in difficult situation. However, there are definitely a number of shortcomings. Human rights message has spread globally. It has created a lot of aspiration and we were able to witness that during the Arab Spring. However, numerous challenges. Uh, and uh, it seems uh, that if human rights aspirations are not met, people will all over the world uh, rebel. However, Arab Spring has also clearly shown that it is not enough to have democratic aspiration, that there is an urgent need for support to relevant institution building and widening of democratic space. Obviously, free and fair elections are not enough to bring democracy. Now, here start our questions for our side event. Both uh, Vienna Declaration and Plan of Action, uh, they were envisaging close links between human rights, rule of law, and democracy. Now, where are those links now? Do we have them and how to overcome the present disconnect? You have mentioned MDGs and uh, our reflection on what to do with social and economic agenda post-2015. Although original MDGs were closely related to human rights, uh, with right to food, with right to education, with right to health, they were not making direct references to human rights, which weakened MDGs uh, because they were limited uh, to political targets and not treaties as legal obligations of member states. Can we do something more in post-2015 period? Can proposal of the UN task force on sustainability, equality and human rights be adopted as social and economic agenda by member states? And finally, since Vienna, there have been many tragedies, many victims of violations of international humanitarian law, of international human rights law. And despite of our promises after Srebrenica and after Rwanda, we have failed again as international community in Sri Lanka. That was the reason that Secretary General uh, mobilized an uh, internal review group to try to identify practical measures on how to prevent such tragedies from reoccurring. 
what are practical steps that can be taken by Secretariat as well as by Member States. Are we doing enough in present end crisis, be they in DRC, in Mali or in Syria? So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, hoping to see you on 25th at the site event. Thank you also from my side.